Yes, Jack. It does feel good playing music. It's what we do. Hello, welcome to Anthony's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury and this is the rather lovely... Dave Tench. Very nice to see you all. And I was moaning, (laughs) being a cantankerous, cynical person I am about music, and you have been a light that's come in the room today and reminded us that music is lovely to play together. So thanks for jamming. Well, thanks to you too. Dave's come along because he's a big time Nord user. Mm-hmm. And Rob Wallace said has sorted this all out for us. Yeah, and in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the your favourite patches, or how you use the Nord on some of these type of gigs that Dave does. That will be on the uh, bottom of the screen because he's a very humble gentleman. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the video and let's high five for the screen. <sighs> Actually, should we um, should we break for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's what you want to do. I used to love that when you get. <laughs> <laughs> and the artist or something would go, yeah, and everyone would go, yeah, yeah, sure. And you've just spent like eight hours setting up. We've taken a bit of time getting the Nords set up with some of the patches that you use yep. on the voice. Yep. If you're in England and or anywhere in the world, the voice is everywhere, right? Yeah, the voice is, there are hundreds of versions of the show all over the world. And um, we're lucky enough to be the house band for the UK version. And we also do the kids version of the show too. So we have a lot of good fun doing that. Um, and actually, it's been quite a lot of years now. It's been seven years that I've been doing that show. And so, yeah, I just loaded in some sounds that I'm using. Um, I'm not the only keyboard player on the show. We have Jake Edwards Wood playing on there Shout too. out to Jake. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a picture of Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Ping. Um, he does a fantastic job. And actually, because I'm directing the band and the music for the show, I'm often super busy. So actually, he can be very busy working out sounds and, and doing that kind of thing while I'm discussing the direction of the song, perhaps with the singers and all that kind of stuff. It takes a lot of pressure off me and I'm very thankful to him for that. Which means actually that the sound creation that's left for me to do isn't that complex. So it's been years now of not really having to dive in that much. Um, uh, So I guess if uh, any viewers of this video wanted to really get into the, under the hood of these instruments, then perhaps they're in the wrong place. But (laughs) but, um, I think you and I have a similar kind of attitude to how we use these instruments and what we like about them, don't you think? From what I've heard, and initially what I heard in that patch, which sounded to me like a piano with a pad, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, Let's start, yeah, I did a video on that, on the kind of main patch I would set up on a Nord. But how do you approach it? What what have you got going in there? Yeah, so um, my main go-to thing that I start from for most of these things, because as you know, if I'm playing a tune on, on the voice, most a lot of my accompaniment might just be singer starts yeah. and it's very very simple oh yeah oh yeah oh no 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 yeah yeah oh no <laughs> yeah there you go um but the point of it is that our accompaniment is often very very simple so that the singer can shine yeah. in whatever they want to do uh, but you do a touch man I can, you can hear it right tay tay's in the room with us tay tay <laughs> no, you not. can hear it and um oh it's beautiful what yeah, what piano sample have you got? Okay, so this one's called White Grand, um, and I'm very bad at remembering exactly how, what instrument they sampled. Me too. To I get... think it's very clear on the website. Or, or it's the fact that we don't go back to That's the website point. once we've put it in and we just enjoy the <laughs> sound of it. Um, so I use this White Grand thing at the moment, and I, I tend to have the extra large sample for the main piano that I use just because it comes, with, it then is a sample of every note of the piano, as you yeah. know, uh, and then you get more overtones and various other things. Um, so if I'm playing a ballad and I'm covering the entire range, then I can enjoy every aspect of that piano sound. Um, it does sound, we haven't loaded the white grand in, in right, okay. any of our videos, and it does sound beautiful. It, it's room. really nice, especially at, at the extremes. So. Um, And then up here. And if you just want to bring out loads of compression. (laughs) 
and I, I, I use it quite a lot. But the, the unit could be any of them. I mean, if I switch to bright ground, it does the same job, you know. It's preference, it's taste. Right, we're going to get dorky Nord stuff. Because, man, like, Dave... <laughs> I've known about Dave for a long time. I moved up from the Shire into London, <laughs> and Dave's always been the head honcho. So I'm here. This is for all my mates. I want in that. So if someone said to you, or "You're the boss. I want the bright ground," would you switch the bright ground, or would you use some of these new filters that are in there? Uh, they've got. Would you change? And also, my other question is compression. Yeah. How much when you're running normal? Would you have any compression on there or not? It's it's difficult really because it totally depends on on the particular performance you're doing and what you're trying to do. I yeah. would have no compression if I was doing, and you must have done loads of these too, where you just accompany a singer and you are the solo uh, accompanist. Then there's no need for that compression. You're just playing that pure. But like John Newman, love me again, all that housey. Then you have to go yeah. there. And and the thing that's great about these instruments is you go there super fast. You 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 know select which one was it? Bright ground there. So I'm, I'm in Balladsville, and then if I just want to start hammering it, and then if also what I could do is then just copy that um, that panel, and then move it to panel B. So then I'm I'm quickly moving between the two. I could start. Uh, let me just say what I would do. I go copy yeah. A, uh, and then shift copy. I don't do a lot of copying. That's a good tip. So there we go. Well, we're in. So now I have the exact same thing on panel A as I have in panel B. So now I can say, right, well, for my, for my balladsville, I might. In fact, I might even use a different piano. So I'll go back to white grand for. Because you do a lot of medleys as well, don't you? Where you're firing through. We we do lots of things like that. We also do loads of arrangements. Absolutely loads of arrangements that start with just piano doing hardly anything. That and then we. But this kind of arrangement, you know, where yeah. everything, the kitchen sinks in it by the end. Uh, and, and actually, that works really well on the voice because it gives the coaches who have their backs turned an opportunity to be slowly introduced to what the singer can do. You see what I mean? So it's all about just trying to give them the best accompaniment that we can give. So, um, yeah, so we would start with like a simple ballad and then by later on, all I do is switch to panel B and I've whacked up compression, adjusted slightly. Let, let's let's do. Can we do that? Can we work through the levels? Sure. Yeah. So so we're yeah. there. You'd start maybe on that white ground, and then mm -hmm. uh, also, do you ever? You're always flat on the EQ, and it, you're using it as an effect more than a standard. Um, actually, no. I, I've got to admit that I am a constant twiddler with EQ. Yeah. Right. And, and actually, I don't really. I'm not proud of it because what you <laughs> tend to be doing is you're EQing to. To whatever you're monitoring with yeah. and everybody's monitoring with different things you might make an adjustment here that makes it sit nicely for you but in the truck where they're doing the sound or you know broadcast or whether it's broadcast or a gig they might be thinking oh my goodness he's just dialed in a load of things a frequency that i don't want and, and actually that that same thing applies to the piano sounds because there are so many piano sounds to choose from with nord and now with this stage three you can fit a lot more in mm -hmm. What sounds good to you to play might not sound great out front. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, so you've got to. Uh, collaborate with the people that you're yeah. working with really um i would stick to one piano sample for the whole gig yeah mainly f for that to because the singers get put off don't they by the eq changes they can yeah yeah fortunately on the voice i'm able to sort of make these changes because the yeah. singers are constantly rot changing around rotating yeah. so it, it, they can get used to a certain thing and then they can stick with it um what would be your go-to move then would you like scoop out a bit of the mids or do you add highs when you uh, well, with this white ground, what I'm usually doing is just adding a little bit of top. So if I just put the EQ on there, so this is flat. Um, if I was going like a, well, just a simple. It's a common sort of intro I'll do, and then yeah. <laughs> super simple. And then with this, I might think to myself, well, actually for this tune, find a bit of mid to take out. You raise it up, find the honkiness. Yeah. 
then a bit of extra top. Without. With. Oh, of course, the shame is it's a boost, so you, you, you're automatically thinking, oh, it's great because it's louder, but it, it does but make it did a difference. But it did clean it up as well. There was yeah. a hall that yeah. you've got rid of. And actually, if, if you don't want to bother with that, you could just switch to another sample and it might be already inherent in that. It's, you, the speed with which you can do that is fantastic. And I you're think. a... You were stage two reverb guy. I, I, I always have been. And yet more and more now, I'll use a bit of room. Because I, saw, I don't know if I'm right about this. We're getting well nerdy about it. I love having a fellow Nord Ike. Well, you've got, look, you've got more options on that Nord Wave 2 over there, actually, for, for reverb. Yeah, you got a new one. But the, the, the general thing with live playing, and this is live playing, the hall, it, the hall reverbs I use at home to practice with, because it's nice to just have headphones on and just pretend that you're in that place. But I very rarely use them live because mm. they're just, they're so big. Never. Yeah. So a little bit of stage then is, is kind of the job. I don't know even what the stage is. It's like their own proprietary reverb because it doesn't sound like a stage three, but it's, it seems like the best one in there for me It just too. seems to work, yeah. And actually now you've got the option between bright and just regular. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you've got And that. per panel. How big a change was that, right? Yeah, Because right. on the stage two, because yep. if you're looking at this at a stage three, why is it so much money? They're like the Ferrari of keyboards, yep. not just a colour. But now you can have that per per layer. And it's a, that was a big difference. Whereas before, yeah, because yeah, people would want, you'd have that like, tripped out kind of reverby piano in the right hand. Yeah. But yeah, it was a global setting. And yeah. I think that's massive. When this one came out and I, we took delivery of it, both me and Jake, it's just such a familiar thing. It's it's a it's an evolution to their brand and what they do. So straight away you're like, well, it's not that different, is it? But then slowly over time you get used to those things, like what you just mentioned, and then you Are just. Are there like, any other bits in there that you? Well, we talked about one earlier, and I'll, so I'll, I'll mention it again now. So if I'm playing, if I'm doing something where where there's like a say a record that filters down like often the whole mix can filter down and then come back up yeah. or even if a record doesn't do it but we decide we want to do it as an arrangement idea so for example we've we've gone through the verse which was just a straight piano thing we brought in drums for the pre we've hit chorus we've brought in all of the stuff bells and whistles and then when we get to the bridge we just want to come down to nothing and give the singer some space but i want to keep my piano for after that bridge for the end chorus so here's my piano on, on panel B which I'm happy with so sorry on panel A which I'm happy with on panel B I might have the same piano so let's do that copy thing again so copy panel A and then shift paste to B there we go so now we have the same thing on both but on this one I might want to do a filter so I will make sure that you use flat and then I will you go to this low pass and then we go fully wet we want the res down obviously as well so now we have this cutoff which is great because now I can start this bridge say the bridge is like um, and then we're working through that but what's even better than that is I don't have to do I don't have to use that I can just assign it to this expression pedal I've got down here oh. or anywhere so then I will say right well I'll put that down to zero put my pedal on zero hit, hit this button here control pad and then run that through its full um you know travel yeah <laughs> and now oh, i'll just kill the strings we wouldn't need those so now i can play whatever i want to play and bring up the cutoff <laughs> I have no idea what I just played. But <laughs> that is... Motivational. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's, you do everything with such purpose. It's so lovely to hear it. No, this the top, top, top dog. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. But you, you can hear it. and But that feature, don't... I can't believe it wasn't there before. I know, you get so used to it. When it comes... I'm, I've like, got the stage two, I'll be... Uh, honest you know I haven't upgraded to the stage three but that is a huge one if yeah, anyone's trying to think why would I want a stage three yeah and 
and maybe you can hear the quality of it as well. It sounds so warm when you're down there. That's true, actually, yeah. And that quality thing is true uh, across the board. So the, the two, I played the two for a long time, but then when you play the three, just sonically, it's better, which could be loads of reasons, couldn't it? I think mm. they're improving the samples all the time. Possibly the, out, the DAC is improved. The effects get better all the time. So um, often the changes are subtle, but they're welcome, you know. So all the time we're hearing in this kind of go-to first patch, got the piano, mm -hmm. we've filtered it, we've EQ'd it, mm -hmm. reverb. What do you like to have as a pad behind there? Well, um, the go-to pad. To be honest, when it comes to warm sort of soft pads, they're so easy and quick to make. Um, but and, and Nord have um, a whole load of stuff ready to go. So yeah. they're just called warm pad and you just bring them in. That, to be honest with you, that's what I just use. That warm pad is the one. It's fine. It just does the job perfectly well. And you can adjust it slightly. You could, um, let me just see what I've got here. See, at the moment I've got a sample loaded, which is one that I've made in my own, some strings from a, a library at home. And I can ask you, can we hear that on its own? Because that's yeah, what's course, beautiful course, about yeah. the Nord. We've got this on-off button system. So I suppose it's great for you as an MD oh, as well see, when yeah. you say to Jake, hey man, like, can I just hear, what, what's that other sound below it? And he can just flick a button. I see what you mean, yeah. So, um, uh, whatever we can turn off the, the piano, can't we? Okay, yeah. so then straight away that's and gone, we, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things that I really love about the Stage 3, and actually it's not the same on the Wave 2, you just, it, it, this is a preference thing, right? But the effects are, um, when, you, when you use your expression pedal, which I'm using all the time, the effects remain for the sound when you kill the volume with your expression pedal. Because of I've the got way... tail on it. it. Exactly. So therefore, if you're playing strings like this, let me just find a, perhaps a different sound. And that's your sample you put in there. Well, it's, yeah, I didn't make it. It's from a library that I had at home. See, Lovely. See, the string sounds that come with the Nord are all absolutely fine, and I've been using them for years. But again, it's about those little improvements. I thought, well, I've got some pretty cool libraries at home. Why don't I try sampling them? And then Nord came out with this new sample editor. Is it called Sample Editor 3 or something? Yeah, that's it. Bang on it. So the, the, the one they had before worked too, but this new one is just super easy. You just sort of play, bring up the library, get the sound the, how, the way you want it. And then just play all those notes, make a WAV file, and then just load it into the sample editor, and boom, it just sort of recognizes where they all need to be. A little bit of tweaking, and then you, you have your sound. So I did that for sample libraries at home, and also for some uh, old synths that I had. I have an old OB8, Oberheim OB8 in the lockup, and, which I used to use on the gig, but it's a big beast. It's huge, yeah. And can, you know, pots get crackly, and you know how it is with analog gear. Yeah. So I thought, well, let me just sample this and, and you know, it's a compromise, but at least it's here in the thing. I'll, I'll play some stuff later, but if I... And what um, are these, sorry, I've got to ask, in case, what strings did you go for? So I, I sampled quite a few Spitfire from the Spitfire libraries. Um, and of course it doesn't, like I said, it's a compromise, the way Nord gets sounds into its... Uh, you in Albion, got, is it Albion or, I've got that Oliver Arnold's... Oh yeah, that's a nice, nice but library. But super... Yeah. So, uh, um, well, what have we got? Let me just see. Thank um, you, mate. So I'm just getting no, nerdy about it. It's fine. <laughs> so I did. Uh, so this one's um, from the library called Tundra. So I find this works really well, especially for padding. So let me just put a bit. I'm of very in. excited about this, by the way. <laughs> really? This is. I, I'm such a nerd when it comes to the Spitfire stuff. I think it's the best. Okay. Well, so this is the. I've added some verb here, but actually, there's already some on the. I mean, no tail to it, but obviously it's yeah. part of the sound. But if I put a little bit on extra... Can you hear it there then? Yeah, that yeah. Randomness. Actually, when you play the notes in isolation, that's when you really hear the imperfections in the library, which Spitfire always keep in. Um, there'll be... We'll be here all day, but there'll be some notes where you'll hear... Strange things happening.
hear the, you actually hear the um, the players' uh, bows bouncing across the strings. Here. And the way they got that library is they just made everybody play super soft. That's how they did it. But then if you play it hard, it's some, it becomes something. I'm well impressed how you've... And like I said before, for me, what I love, other people might not like this, but to be able to go... and have that reverb that you put on it, be the... Because if, you were in a, if you're listening to players in a room, the room doesn't go when you mm -hmm. turn the volume off. So, other, I mean, other instrument players, like guitarists and bass players, might go, wait a minute, if I've got a volume pedal, I want the sound to go, please. I don't want anything. But it's, we're doing a different thing here. We're trying to convince people that the players are there. That's the first time I've ever heard anyone sample Spitfire into a Nord, and I can't believe I haven't done it before. It's, well, I... But it takes, it's that extra much, but this is the extra effort. But when people think, oh, why are these guys, why are you the guy? This is the extra effort. It sounds incredible, man. Taylor, Taylor's loving it. <laughs> he's back in church. He's on Sunday on a church. He's, he's back. This sounds incredible, man. Yeah, I think... Um... How, so how long do you... Well, in that sample, editor, how long are you putting in there? Because I've, like, I've got some of the Spitfire stuff and you get those evolutions over time. Yeah, well, I, actually, I did sample one of those... Um, it's chamber evolutions like this, so I'll, I'll yeah. Wow. So like such, um, it's a. Beautiful. I mean, not always that usable live, but it can work as a little pad in a section if you just wanted to hold something. And in. no laptops were harmed in the making of this video. Exactly. <laughs> You didn't have to worry about all that. You didn't have to worry about it. Um, so with this, I, I, I don't know how long would I have. I'd start here and I'd just do every tone. Um, wait for it to kind of run its course, whatever was mm -hmm. of interest in that kind of um, cycle. Sounds like it would be enough. And I'd just run up the keyboard like that. Um, it's a bit of a boring process, but in various areas, you'll get kind of cool things happening. And then, and then in the library, it needs a longer release, doesn't it? But beautiful that you can manipulate it with yeah. the... Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And actually, I'm not demonstrating that today, but the manipulation is endless. The, actually, this synth section, you, you could start with something from a library that you've got at home, and then say, well, I'll just add another synth to it, and I'll do Stack this. Stack it up, the unison. Yeah, I'll have two yeah. panels. I could have. You can really start making massive stuff. I think I don't do it often because I'm often... You know, on the voice, we're, we're, we're emulating songs and hits and things that people are used to, and we want that immediacy. So that ex experimental part of synth playing is not really what we're about. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a place for that, and the Nord is capable. Um, so yeah, I, and I went through all the way through. Now, you didn't have to do that. If you wanted a smaller sound, you didn't want it to take up as much room, you could just sample every four notes or something. Mm -hmm. And then the Nord sample editor will just stretch it across the keyboard. But then, obviously, as you do that, it becomes you less... Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, every, every time. Um, do you ever... So, this, we've done it. We've done the piano and we've done the pad side of it. Yes. Uh, should we move to the Nord wave? Yes, yeah, sure. This is, this is a new keyboard for you, yep. isn't it, this it, year? It's new. I'm still getting my head around it, to be honest. So let's, um, <laughs> let's double fist pump through the glass and we'll go into it. Ready? <laughs> Norway 2, we plugged it in. Yeah, You put right. some patches in. We've <laughs> put some sounds in, yeah. And you would run these... What's the, the whole rig you've got going on? Okay, so this is new for my rig, so I actually haven't even got it in yet because we haven't done any work to, do, to have it, but um, to make use of it. So for me, the rig's always been the, the Nord stage at the bottom. Now that's the three... Called Kronos sits on the top, and then on on this side I've always had different boards. So I've got an OB6 at the moment. You know that one oh. uh, from Dave Smith. A discerning Tom choice. <laughs> yeah, good for the analog stuff. Before that, I actually had my Oberheim OB8 
in the rig. With a big monster one. Yeah, the monster thing, yeah. And obviously every time you played it, it just sounded like Prince, 80s, it sounded fantastic. Jake on the other side of the stage has got, again, Nord Stage, uh, what's he got, Electro that he plays this organ on, I think. And then he's got Stage 3, Kronos, and he has a, a Juno 106 as well. So both of us had true analogue, but I'm, I'm thinking now that I'm, I'm going to take that away and either bring the Wave 2 on top to replace the, the Kronos or have it on the side as a kind of thing. So it's whenever I'm going for synth sounds, this is my go -to, will be my go-to thing. So, so far, I haven't really dived How long deep. have you had it? So a couple of months. Not, not long? No. And so, you've been working as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's, we've been doing the voice still. But um, So yeah, I'm just sort of getting into it. And I, there's things that I really, really like about it. Uh, and there's things that I'm probably never going to touch. There's, there's quite a lot <laughs> in that arpeggiator that, that's great for people to get into. Uh, polyphonic stuff that they can kind of change the, the way the chords move over time. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's probably but they've been good. selling it as a live yeah, it's, keyboard, and, yeah. and especially with those. Yeah, what what turns you on about it so far? Uh, well, of course, the the best thing is the layer control. So having these four things here, and just without changing patch, you can have so many things that you're moving between. So you can yeah. have a bass sound here, but then over here you could have EP and strings, and just right in front of you there, you're controlling it, um, and you've done all that without actually saving a new patch. Mm. So that, that's a, a big time saver. I absolutely love the choral feature of the reverb, um, which is sort of reminiscent of a lot of pedals out there. You know, it just has a, a nice sound yeah, to it. Yeah, that kind of big sky type modulated reverb. If I select, um, wait a second. And it's lovely having that amount of keys. Uh, the, yeah, for me that well, this is the minimum really <laughs> for yeah. us. For us live players, it's always been about having this amount of yeah octaves. Um, when it's one less, it's just having to change uh, octave here. You always, I bet there's always a bit of a song where you need just like a little sakuhachi or something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little. It's always bit. a bloody sakuhachi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it can be frustrating. So yeah, the size of it, the build quality is like a tank, like everything Nord makes. Um, and extra effects, uh, more control, the, the delay where you can change how the tail behaves. So you can, uh, let me turn reverb off for a second. Uh, so on that one there, I've got the low pass filter. So straight delay, let's oh, just turn it up a bit. Lovely more. and dark. And then if I put the, exactly the low pass, I can change how that behaves. I can then use high pass. So it, to be able to do that, which you couldn't do before, is really good. Uh, and then also the feedback can have like a vibrato to it. Or chorus. It does sound wicked in the room. It sounds great, yeah. And let's hear that chorale. Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that this delay something like that and let's just lose that. So then if we put this in, let's go put it cathedral then, I suppose. Um, yeah, so, sorry, without the chorale, it's like this, which is cool, and then with it, um, which actually sounds, when in isolation, a little bit wild, but then when you're playing something, you've... It's kind of a cool Beautiful. thing to have, and and to be able to control Very cinematic it. Cinematic and yeah, and assign it to the wheel as well, super fast. So you got that thing, and then the morph button as well. This is something that I, I use a lot. I didn't actually talk about it on the Nord Stage Three, but on. <laughs> It might seem like a very small thing to a lot of people, but being able to just kill the effects super fast is something that we do all the time. You'll recognise it too. Mm -hmm. If you be playing a tune, everything's happening, and then the, the whole mix on the record would just give the singer a second, and then everything's it's back in again. part of playing, timing when to turn Exactly, so you could just say, well then, impulse morph, what we'll do is we'll say, we want the uh, reverb to go off, and then everything's dead. So I might go into this world of... And then we might be then filtering all the time. Cat, the cat, cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's probably <laughs> signature fill. Um, Sorry, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but actually um it probably wasn't the best uh, explanation but it's just very useful to have it and then also rather than killing things with this button you can make things come alive and have all kinds of things happen so the control is really good um what were the choices in your head then when you were thinking I'm getting rid of the Oberheim. Did you run through it? Was there anything else on your shopping list before you went for the Nord? Um, well, that's a good question, that, yeah. Uh, I've, had, I've had loads of different things for that analog thing. And the truth, I wonder if you, um, I wonder if you'll relate. The truth is, the, the way analog instruments behave, that kind of organic thing, and the fact that they're just out of tune, really, is, um, <laughs> so true. It's well, they're just slightly. It they're drifting, aren't they? They're drifting all the time, and they behave in a certain way. Uh, think when things are slightly out of tune, they're more reminiscent of a real world instrument because that's how they work. So it's always been everyone's dream to have that kind of analog instrument there that's fully reliable. And I've honestly, man, I've, I've owned quite a lot and played quite a few. I had an Alesis Andromeda. Oh, that was. And it sounded kill. I mean, it sounded unbelievable. But Way ahead of its time. The it, amount of analog oscillators, right? Yeah, uh, there was an eight, eight voice or a sixteen voice. Sixteen I, I voice. Think, or was it all sixteen? But anyway, crazy I had a 16 interface. Voice. Yeah. yeah, and it had a ribbon controller. It had everything you you could possibly need, but its user interface and the ingenuity just wasn't there. You just you weren't going to it very often because it was a bit of a pain to to use. There's people out there who probably love them still and play them and, and they sound incredible. I used to watch, uh, is it the keyboard player with Jamiroquai now, Matt, I forget his surname, I'm sorry. Johnson, is oh, it? Oh, Matt Johnson, yeah. Awesome YouTube channel. Okay. Matt right. Johnson, I doth my Danish Pete Cap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Matt is absolutely a fantastic player. Yeah. I used to watch him play the Andromeda on gigs. I'm sure he doesn't play it anymore. I'm mm. sure he's got all kinds of other things that he uses now. In fact, I've seen him with the OB6. Yeah, the, the desktop one. Yeah, okay. And, and the... But really, it's in the person who's programming it, and you know, it's he's obviously super skilled at that. Um, whereas, if you bring in a Juno or an old synth and you just play anything, a pad on it, a brass sound, it just sounds alive. So now with this Wave Two, what I did was I went to the lockup and I took the OB out, and I took the Juno One Hundred Six out. I took a few other things, some of the modern analogs as well, so the Behringers, the Poly D. Um, and I just sampled those instruments to put them in here. And to Are be they able... in there now? Yeah, I've got some, yeah. Could we listen to it? <laughs> yeah, sure. This is... Because um... will... well, there'll be another video where we're just talking. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll um... talk to you all there. Right? So... so this one here is the OB8, and I just made a pad out of it. So, uh, so like... Um... Cool, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> It's great. And the filter, sorry, the filter there is assigned to the, the expression pedal. Oh, it so. melds together. So that's an audio sample of your OBA. Yeah, yeah. So I layered, I layered two and then, so I've got one. Let's have a look if we solo. Oh, I've panned them as well. Exactly. Oh, that's what that, I did. Yeah, the expansive yeah. brassiness. So all that is, is just, uh, if I t I've got some chorus on as well. But, but it melds so well with the sample. It sounds like it's coming out of... Yeah. It's not like you're playing on an old Akai sampler or... No, no, no. It's all meld together. Exactly. It's held together by the, by the Wave 2 the and the way it works. The filter sits with it. It feels like it's part... Exactly. Like you're triggering in an engine almost. Yes. So what have I got here? Soloed. So this is just a sine wave, just an octave below, just to give it a little bit extra weight underneath. Really easily done, You've and then captured that way. And then this side, uh, this is one side, and they're detuned as well. So this is ten cents down. The other one's ten, ten cents up, I think. Yeah, the other, the other way around. So I take it off solo, then you get it all together. And then we can have a different amount of vibrato, which I put on the wheel. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Wow. Um, and then... I've and, and the thing that you're going to make some money selling these things. 
<laughs> Let, put it in the comments below. That we, well, the truth is, we you need to get we need to flog your your packs. <laughs> I'll buy the day tennis pack. This this uh, is made from the you know the Behringer Poly D. So I sampled that and then. Oh, lovely bit of wobble on it. Oh, sorry, that's it's too much. <laughs> Well, yeah, I suppose you could put a little bit of that in. How do you get on with that, the Poly D? Unbelievable, right, for the money? It's fantastic, yeah. Can you believe it's, it? It's just great. <laughs> it sounds like it should sound, you know, yeah. It's just the first down payment, you know? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> so it's quite thick, and then, and actually, one of my favourites that I use now, uh, well, I'm going to use a bit, is my... Um, old Moog Prodigy that I have. So I brought that out and then just sampled just the sawtooth, you know, and what have I got here? Oh, that's the OB8 brass that I just, th this is actually the sample. So I didn't actually create anything out of this. The raw, if I go to the raw sample, sorry, uh, in a second, like this, and we just turn some stuff off. I just sampled it like that. So I had two oscillators on the OB8. Right. And they just played it through all the different notes and so because I wanted that sound and you can hear how wonky it is <laughs> and then I don't know I did some stuff move some effects what did I do? oh I didn't even bother so there's nothing wow. there that's all it is a bit of filter maybe if you wanted Oh yeah, the, um, the v velocity sensitivity is added to it as well, so that's quite nice to play for comp, you know. <laughs> oh, 80s. <laughs> and I reckon, let's, let's preempt the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, people are going to be like, You know, be like, oh, we, we're just playing samples, why not use a... Well, I can't. But, I can't, I can't. but, but just as easily. I would say that this is the whole point of the Nord Wave, mm -hmm. which and that the, the bit where you've got the hands on control mm -hmm. and it's melded with stuff you've already. You're, it's the biggest part of the Nord experience is using the sampler to the way you've done it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly right. Uh, and you're seeing the re, you're seeing like the top guy. This is what people do. You, we're not just flicking through presets you're you've already you're putting everything into one it's like you can remember those n sonic the asr 16 yeah and you could put samples in but this is another level when you're moving it moving the filter i can't believe how authentic it sounds <laughs> i just thought i'd while you were talking there i just thought i'd just show like that it's so quick and easy to do it the other way so i can just so this is just the noise of the wave to the yeah. internal synth engine yeah well i just quickly put a couple of sawtooths one, one on one layer one on the other detune them slightly i'll just yeah. put some filter on it and then we need to then um that's a great point so not only can you bring out your a la carte favorites yes but if someone says that's the the limitation of samples isn't it like oh i want a different um oscillator blend yep and then you can just turn to the end what have you cooked up there you just cook this up yes yeah because i thought well what i did was i made that ob uh thing on the on the ob8 and then i sampled it the way i wanted it but I could have just made it like this, which I've now done pretty quick. Really it's the same thing, really. I mean, it's just so the, the the waveforms that are in there are already fantastic, and you know now that on the on the wave two now you have these super. I think they're on the stage three as well. Like you have these super saw tooth like, waves yeah. which are quite useful like the ja xp yeah. those type dual saw and stuff so if i no, no it was a j3 it was a j800 was it? yeah um it's just that slightly... big roland thing yeah. oh okay they're just slightly thicker aren't they <laughs> i mean that you could have that, or you could sample your own thing. You can do whatever you like. This is the square wave from my Moog Prodigy. Just a bit of delay on it. Oh, actually, I did a bass sound with the Prodigy as well. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's cool, isn't it? And personally, do you feel... I can tell how excited you are. It must be nice to know that that's real, that's yours, and you've consolidated the rig. Yeah, that feels nice for me. To yeah. really part, you know, like leave those at home, but you're not missing them because they're there with you. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the only reason I did it is because I know that those synths... You see, the problem is that if you... I sampled a sawtooth from that Prodigy, and when you play it against side by side with the sawtooth that's already handed to you in the Nord, it sounds the same. A sawtooth sounds like a sawtooth, right? And yet across the keyboard, because you sampled a wonky synth, the pitch has changed slightly, things have got a little bit wonky, and that's what I want. Uh, when I go to a thing, it's like what we were talking about before, that analog synth, mm -hmm. you want that kind of weirdness. Well, I can hear it, man. It sounds great. <laughs> cool. It sounds great. Well, should we, should we jam out? Yeah. Should we jam out at the end? And thanks so much for showing us through. Leave uh, any comments, we read them all. Good or bad, Dave. We'll take yeah, all comers. And if you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, then like I said, let us know. We'll read it. We'll absorb the hate. And we'll turn it into love. <laughs> with wonky synth patches and such. <laughs> and check out our other video with Dave where we're going to dig a bit deeper under what makes a Dave Tench. <laughs> what does make one? Uh, Dangerous. Go for it, mate. You can jam us out. I might. Join. What key are you going to be in? Uh, let's play an F. stack it about I get through that first bar and then I no. get up every time <laughs> <laughs> wicked cool maybe, right maybe maybe this one try that <laughs> oh, that's the last bit normally I'll go <laughs> all on all on the camera as well well done <laughs>